How many of you recall being told in school that when you're taking notes during a lesson or a lecture and the teacher repeats something, it's important, so take note of it and write it down. Four times in our gospel reading today, we hear Jesus refer to himself as the bread of life. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. John 6, 35. I am the bread that came down from heaven. John 6, 41. I am the bread of life. John 6, 48. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. John 6, 51. Let's explore a little more about the bread he speaks of. In one of the commentaries I read earlier this week, the author, David Hull, references how in today's world, bread is often served at meals as a starter or as a side. He goes on to indicate that those who might be watching their diets choose to forgo the bread. He states, therefore, when we hear that Jesus is the bread of life, we can too easily think in terms of a metaphor for something that is as optional as a dinner roll. Hull goes on to point out that the Western mindset allows us to think of bread as an extra that we can take or leave. He then reminds us that in Jesus' time, utensils were not used, and that people ate with their hands and dipped the bread into the food as a way to bring the food from the dish to the mouth. This was actually the means by which someone partook of a meal. Bread, then, was not an extra to be chosen or omitted. It was how persons accessed the food that was placed before them. Paul identifies John's Gospel as being written for us to understand that life is the main course. The bread is how we are able to receive the main course. Thus, we touch briefly on the mystery of the Incarnation. Jesus, human here on earth, yet divine, coming from heaven, being sent from God above. Just as the bread continually allows our lips to taste that main course over and over again, Jesus serves as the means, the way to a life of abundance here on earth thus allowing us to experience God's presence over and over again each time we choose to come to the table. Several weeks ago, I attended a retreat where we thought about the reign of God and what it looked like within our own ministries. And even more so, what did it look like extended in the community outside our own church community? As a deacon, I am constantly called to look beyond our community walls, to be out in the world and to serve as a bridge, bringing each other's needs, gifts, and talents to a balance of service to one another. I thought about the many ministries with where I serve, and I thought about the people who by the grace of God become a part of what is experienced and shared. I thought deeply about what it truly means for one to serve as Christ's hands and feet in the world. I thought about what it means to be on the receiving end of being served. I even had an afterthought of what it might have been like to hear the complaining that Jesus heard that day when they questioned his divinity. I was reminded what it must feel like when there is a struggle with accepting one, one's nature of being or one's purpose for being there. I thought about what it means to be in a community and what it means to not be in community. And each of these things brought my thoughts back to the bread. Bread is considered to be a staple food item, a common everyday food item that provides nourishment to our bodies. Jesus comes to us and teaches us about the divine connection, that if we choose to believe in him, his relationship with us will serve in our daily lives as being our bread, the nourishment that will sustain us, provide us with revelational knowledge, strength, courage, compassion, 
and love to share with others. This bread not only feeds the one that partakes of it, but it provides an everlasting gift, an energizing gift that is able to be passed from one to another as long as we choose to open our hearts and minds to share it. And I thought of Jesus' response to the people that day. It was not even a response that answered their question of whether he was human or divine, but it was one that offered assurance and clarification with realizing that sometimes it's okay to accept that not all things are comprehensible. Sometimes we just don't know why or how. But if we allow God's grace to step in, we often will be blessed with a special experience and outcome. One of the ministries that is done here at St. Thomas is the Lay Eucharistic Visitor Ministry. This ministry sends trained laity, licensed by the bishop, to take communion out to the sick and homebound. More and more, we find they are visiting people in memory care facilities and oftentimes are faced with the reality that the person they are visiting may not comprehend our reason for being there. And for some, it may be a chaotic visit upon arrival. We have found, however, that those who connect with church and in particular the lay Eucharistic service that is done seem to respond with a calming peace and some may even respond with a very joyous experience in their presence. Oftentimes, those that are visited are hungry, spiritually, physically, and emotionally. And so, to see the joy in their eyes and the smile on their faces, and to have them partake in the services as they are able and may be moved to do so, is a transforming experience that each time, not only for those they visit, but also for the love doing the visitation. One particular place several of our loves visit is Brookdale. It's located on College Square in Overland Park. Dola and John McNown in particular have been visiting this community for the past three to four years frequently before COVID. They are often joined by Beth Anderson, who provides her gift of music to enjoy during their visit. Now each Christmas, we provide the residents there with a large basket filled with paints and art supplies. Studies have shown that music and art are often ways in which we are able to connect in a positive and encouraging way with people who have various forms of dementia. After the first year in doing this, the activities director started hanging up the pictures that many of the res residents painted so that they could be shared and appreciated by all who were there. It's always such a blessing to see through the eyes of someone else how they interpret what they are feeling and experiencing through the use of art. One of the residents, her name was Darlene, being so moved by her experience with the lay Eucharistic visits, painted a picture of what she calls her Brookdale Church. Darlene was easy to spot. She always had a twinkle in her eye, a grateful and joyous smile on her face, and a flower in her hair. If you visited with her, you certainly could see and feel the transforming power of how she delighted in the community brought together and in the receiving of bread. Her painting seemed to show the world how that bread sustained her, even through what might, what most people might feel, was a suffering time in her life. Most recently, we received her framed artwork from her family as a gift in thanksgiving of this ministry shared together. Through this painting and in fond remembrance of Darlene, we will continually be reminded of the difference we are making in the lives of others. As we continue to share in community the love of God 
through the love of Christ and with love for one another. In our gospel reading, Jesus provides those who complain with an answer that allows them to relate how he is the connecting piece, the bread between the main course and the mouth. He tells them that day over and over again that he is the bread and the life. His lesson is an important one, and he wants them to truly grasp it. He is the living bread that comes from heaven. He is the graceful union between us and God, and each time we experience it, each time we gather, whether together at the Eucharistic table or out in the world serving in community with one another, we are raised up, transformed, and filled with an abundant life. Our loves don't know when, why, or even how they may spark a light in the heart of those they visit for each one is different in their own special way. As disciples of Christ, you too, in the many works of ministry that you each do, never know what type of impact you may have with those you come across. We are all called to simply serve as Christ would have us do, and hopefully we allow God's grace to lead the way. So come, come receive the bread, for Jesus says, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Amen. <laughs>